um, putting together a video to uh, go over um, this, uh, trying to replicate this one homework problem. Should probably open up the homework problem, huh? Hmm, let's see. Let's see, I think assignments, and let's take a look at, I think it's homework eight. Open that up. Uh, maybe I got the wrong one. There you go. All right, so, um, okay, so it's 1.25 meters and eight kilograms and a force of 125 newtons placed onto um, this end right there, and we wanna find the accelerations at A and B. So a pretty simple problem. Uh, start with a new part. Uh, make that nice background white. Let's see, we'll be in meters and kilograms. And we'll start with a new part. No, I don't need a new part. We just did that, dummy. Uh, I'm going to go to the top. Why not? Top plane will have it match. And start right here in the middle. Whoop, I meant to be in. I missed the origin. All right, so this I know this is 1.25, right? 1.25. And this dimension, we can go ahead and make it pretty small. 0.2 looks about right, maybe. Mm, make to, to, if you want to make it look like the original problem, but the original problem didn't tell us the width, so it's got to be really a slender rod, right? So I'm actually going to go down to 1. Point one. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. Not gonna let me do it. There you go. Point one. All right. So it's a little bit more slender here, and let's extrude that. What did that not get? Ooh, I want to go back and change that in a second. But let me go. We'll make it a square. There we go. Point one by point one. Mm, is that not really? Is that really fully defined? Let me see. All right, well, what's wrong with you? That should be point. What? Why? Why wouldn't you be fully defined? Oh, I get. Oh, I guess it didn't land. I dis, I guess it didn't make the relation here to go to right there. Now it's fully defined. Okay. Or is it that minus should be going go away? Maybe after I, after I hit okay. Yep, the minus went away. Okay. So there you go. Um, if I can get the thing to come back in the, in the page. Now, uh, I'm not very good at manipulating it with this mouse. What we want to do is, oh, I, I should add in places to measure. So I'm going to put in just a sketch on top of this, put a point there. And a point there. It's just nice to have a place to grab a hold of uh, when you go to measure uh, something. Okay. Um, so let me save this as. And I think I'm going to save it under my regular dynamics course. Why, why are you making that noise? SolidWorks stuff. And I think this semester, if I'm not mistaken, that should have been homework what? What homework problem was that at UHart? I bet it was like homework 18. Something like homework 18. I can't read that. I'm on homework 18, I guess. All right, I guess I'm going to have to open it up. Nope, homework is either, it's probably homework 20 then, yeah, homework 20, let me tell you, double check. Yeah, homework 20, okay. So, uh, let me save it as homework 20. Uh, I guess I'll make it new, new folder. S, 
22 homework 20 and uh, homework yeah, I don't want to put the whole in. Homework, that's 22 ES211 homework 20 prob 1 and this is the bar um, we don't have to uh, uh, model the the ground, right? Because we could just use that as a plane. It doesn't have to be. But we do need, in order to use SolidWorks motion, need to be able to be in, in an assembly. I don't think the motion will work. I mean, I could try it. Mm. And oh, and before we go any further, I should make the mass properties. I should change what the mass properties are. So um, right now it's twelve point five kilograms. Wow, and, it's, and and I guess in the problem I only have it as eight. Is that right? It's only eight kilograms. All right, so it must be lot smaller than what we're showing. Well, let's override the masses, and I'll override the mass and make it eight kilograms and let's see what the moment of inertia is before we go to try to change it um, pretty small right there what did I say in the solution moment of inertia should be 1.024 and yeah about the y-axis is what we care about 1.05 you know what that's pretty good we could try to get that closer but I don't think it's necessary and we could try it in just here. I don't think it'll work though. I think, um, okay, so one thing I can't see. I think I need to expand this up to be able to get it. And my mouse doesn't want to. Uh, come on. I'm going to put it on a better surface. There you go. Nope, it's not going to do it. There you go. All right, grab and make it bigger. And I think I gotta hover over this and make that bigger. Oh well, okay, so I can't do the animations in this one right here. I can't do this uh, um, it, because it's just a part, so it needs to be an assembly. So even though we're only have a, a, a one part assembly, it'd be pretty boring. All right. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and put the just put the bar in there. Boom, and as usual, I like to make it nice and white, okay. And this needs to float. And I don't think I really need to put any mates onto this except, um, on the bottom. I don't have a ball, a, a track ball on this mouse, so it makes it difficult to do the rotation of the thing. I think I have to do this right here. All right, so let me look at the bottom. This is the top. There you go. So I'll put that, and I'll put it with the top plane. All right, so that should come out correctly. Let me see, let's uh, take a look at this as, there you go. And I think that, may, I think that's all the mates that we really need. And I'll go to my motion study now. It's gonna let me have a pull down. You see, didn't even have the pull down over there when it was just a part, so that's why we couldn't do it. Make this a little bigger, make that a little bigger. One of the very first things I want to disable playback keys. And I'm going to find the acceleration. So this doesn't really have to be very long. We'll just make it one second. It could even be much smaller than that. Right? It could be half a second. So if I could get that thing to move, there you go. Here, let me try to I'll zoom in onto the time frame, get bigger. All right, so. Um, I think I can just, uh, in this problem, boom, I kind of want to rotate this thing. I, know, I wish I had a track ball in my mouse. I, I, I never realized how bad I am at SolidWorks without that track ball. I don't usually use this mouse. It's just like a portable mouse. It doesn't have that 
wonderful trackball to rotate things. Uh, I guess I want to add a force. Add a force. And I don't want to want to do it. All right, so I kind of want to rotate this thing around. Will it let me? Uh, I can do is an isometric. But I want to get over onto that face. So I think what I can do is I could just use my, yeah, there you go. So I want to I keep grabbing the wrong mouse. There you go. I want to put it onto this face. And I don't want, that's the face I'm going to put it on. But here's the face that's going to define the direction. It's going to be that edge. Nope. Wait a minute, then what is this for here? Force direction. I want to select components. I want to go in that direction. Hmm. Oh, okay. It's going, okay. So I just need to, uh, that, the, the arrow is correct. All right. So cool. I just, I couldn't quite tell from that orientation. Um, and it really needs to go the opposite direction if we're going to match it up with there. There we go. So it'll go like that right there. And we don't, the units, okay, this would be constant. Why are the units, oh, I know, because this is an assembly. Let me just put a number in there and I'll, I'll fix it. Now. I'll, I'll fix it later. So I'm going to put one pound. And then let me go back into this and change this to the meter. There you go. So I can go ahead and change my force, edit, and what was the original? What was the original force? It was 125. All right, so let's see. 125. And that sounds good. All right, there's not a whole lot to this, is there? All right. Um, I'm going to ramp up because it's only half a second. Let me make 100, not 1,000, 100 time steps. And I don't know, let's calculate it. Whee! Okay. Uh, so there you go. It, it did its thing. Let's see if we can uh, move it to the back here. So interesting. Let's play it slowly here because it, it was it was going pretty fast. And can I? What do I hold down Control? I can move this over here to the side, so it's going to move across the screen. That's not the right mouse. Grab that mouse. All right. Interesting. You know what? I would have been nice is if I had had. Um, let's see. I'll just save all. And so this was S. Do this name here rid of that last part of it there so it's just prob prob problem one and boom let me go back to this and I want to see the stuff in the middle and I want to put uh, let me do this let me put add just I'll just change the sketch it doesn't want to don't want to change it I'll just add a little point another point to the center right here boom Save it and see what happens. Yes, I want to change it. Why well, not? It's fine with me. I don't think it'll fit. I think we don't even need to do this, but let's let's do it anyway. Let's graph these two three points. Actually, one one thing we kind of need to do is to add a trace to that. Do it again. Put another trace. I thought that it might be a little interesting, right? Just to see them go to the center. And then lastly, do it again to the other point. So you kind of watch them. Trace path. Right there. Boom. Interesting, right? So now we can go back to the beginning. Do it again. Well, that doesn't make sense, actually. What? What the hell? That it didn't make sense. 
Well, what about this point right there? Why is that? That starts up here at the beginning. Why? Who makes that part of the line? I must have done something wrong here. There you go. That was weird. Yeah, but it looks kind of cool, though. That looks kind of cool. We... All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Let's take a look at um, the velo accelerations. We don't really care about the velocity. Let's take a look at accelerations. So let's get, ex let's get acceleration in the x direction because that's really all we care about here. So we'll get this guy and then go to the x component and put the vector on there. All right, so put it on the va da, 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 da. I think so. I think that's good. All right, so you can see, or you could barely make out from here what these numbers are because of the stupid uh, um, graphics that I have. But it looks like it has staying 62. And what are my units? Looks like it says meters per second squared. So how do we do up to here? Let's first, let's take a check that out. And 62.5. All right. So that's to be expected. And let's look at the center of gravity. That should be dead on, I think. All right. Uh, linear acceleration. Boom. Let's put a little vector on top of him, too. And let's add that to the plot number four. Boom. Did that not good enough? Oh, we need a, a component X. Yeah. Uh, so this says that it's like 15.62. Yeah, 15.62, which should be what we got right here, 15.63. There you go. And then lastly, uh, right here x let's see what he's going to be boom and we'll add you to an existing plot and boom oh look at that and he's saying he's negative 31 but sometimes you got to be careful you have to might have to go back and touch onto this one but negative 31 right so there you go this is um replicating the results, I think this is a, a successful simulation that represented um, what these uh, uh, v v values were. If you wanted to also maybe go angular acceleration, just, but I mean, it should work out. It's obviously that the, we, we get the right numbers here. Um, but if you want to go to angular acceleration as well, uh, this is going to be about the y axis for this one. And maybe we'll just pick that whole thing. And we could even add it to this plot. Who cares? That should be a constant, right? So that should be a constant value. So let's see. It'll probably end up right there on top. And it'll draw the same. No, it was not the same. Interesting. Well, that's true because the force, that force might be such that it is always aligned with the top like it's done right there so it's not a constant it's not a force that's always horizontal it's a force that's always attached to the top so that would be a difference in the answers right there um but they're saying an angular velocity of four four thousand two hundred and seventy but that's going to be degrees per second squared so we would need to turn that four thousand two hundred and seventy into radians per second squared so we would divide there's two pi radians per revolution so who, who, i think there's an email or something i don't know what that notification is um so we divide by two pi two pi radians per revolution or per degree right okay yeah so we need to go pi times pi 
divided by 180. So, I don't know, my brain's not working. So I should get 74.53, 74.53. And what did we say our answer was? Uh, 75. So there you go, 74.53 versus 75. So we got our angular acceleration correct. Um, I think that's going to be enough. And I was looking right at the screen right there. So you got to see my face. I didn't realize because I'm on a remote thing. To my, never mind, you don't care. Uh, how long is the video? 20 minutes. Oof. I should be home. Saturday.